Andrew Darian of the HT Guys, and today we're going to take a look at uh, comparing high resolution audio to CD quality audio. And uh, we will do that in two parts. The first part will be uh, analytical. We'll look at waveforms and, um, and then look at the uh, output of uh, combining waveforms and that kind of stuff. Then the second part will be subjective. And I'll show you how you can do a blind test with your own audio and come to your own conclusions. Um, so for this test, I went to hdtracks.com and they it's a website that sells high resolution audio. And if you sign up for an account, you can download a sample pack and uh, use that uh, to do these tests that we're gonna talk about here for yourself. So we'll close our Safari and then we'll bring up the audio. Let's see, hdtracks. really buried in there okay so we're using another country by cassandra wilson and uh it's a 24-bit uh file 96 uh kilohertz uh, sample uh rate and we will open this up with our application amadeus pro all right so there you can see the waveform this is the entire track a lot of dynamic range in this and uh, later on I'll show you some audio that um, more modern audio that is um, very loud and doesn't have a lot of dynamic range. We'll talk about that in a little bit. As you can see again 96 uh, kilohertz sample rate 24 bit. So what we're going to do is take this and we're going to make a copy of this but we're going to turn that into 16 bit. And we're going to resample that to 44.1, which is CD quality. And we'll call this 16 bit. And the reason I, I like doing it this way is uh, if you compare some of the songs on the HD track they, um, website, they may be remastered. And so if you compare those to the CD, quality uh, disc that you may have you might not you you might like the hd track more because of it was remastered so i think a fair comparison is take that version and then do the resampling like uh, we did here and then what i'm going to do is open up the 16 bit since uh, most of us deal with cds and um, and then we rip the cds to mp3 or aac and i'm going to take that and we're going to make an AAC version of this. But we're going to do 256 uh, kilobit per second to AAC. And you can choose to do AC3 if you want. And this we're going to use in the second part of the test, but we're just going to make that uh, right now. All right. So now what we're going to do is we're going to open up the 24 bit. And we're going to use Audacity, and Audacity has, uh, I think, better editing tools than Amadeus Pro, which is why we, uh, why I'm using that. All right, so here we have uh, 96 kilohertz, um, and what I'm going to do is change this to 24-bit, and that'll be done in just a second. All right, so we'll play, and you can kind of get a feel for it. I mean, you're not going to really get any quality out of it, but you can. That's the, so that's the music. All right, now what I'm going to do is take the, um, the exact same file and I'm gonna make, put that in here in Audacity. And we're also gonna change this to 24 bit. All right, so we got 24 bit, 96 kilohertz, and they're the identical files. Uh, one of the things uh, I'm going to do is invert the first track. So whatever was up is now down, and what was down is now up. And what I'm hoping to see here is that I get an absolute perfect cancellation. And uh, see, I brought up this uh, website here, this this picture. Uh, you could look at the, this is a waveform, and this is a waveform that's 90 degrees out of phase. If you sum the two together, you get a straight line. So theoretically, uh, the same should hold true for this audio file because it's an exact replication. So we will select this and then go to effects and do invert. 
And what'll happen is you'll see it uh, when that's done, it just kind of shifts a little. There we go, up is down and down is up. So now when I hit play, I should hear nothing. And as you can see here in the, in the meters, there's nothing coming across uh, left and right. All right, now what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to export this file. And we're gonna do um, uncompressed file. And uh, we're just gonna use the uh, AIFF 24-bit PCM. And we are gonna say this is 24-bit versus 24-bit. So, and the reason I'm doing that is Audacity actually has a um, spectrum analyzer, which can show us the resultant file here. All right, so now we will close this guy out and we will put in the 16-bit uh, version of this. And so there, we got 44.1 16-bit. Uh, and compared to the 24-bit, remember this is still inverted. So when I hit play, if these files were exact, uh, you wouldn't see anything. But what you'll find is that there is something because the files aren't exact. And um, it's very low, inaudible, you can't hear it. I've got the volume maxed out and there's no sound coming from the speakers. All right, so we will stop that. And now what we'll do is we will export this audio and we'll call it 16 bit versus, sorry, 24 bit versus 16 bit. All right, so I'm going to uh, close this guy out and then I'll invert this file again just to bring us back to the uh, original. And then I had some uh, more modern uh, music and I'm just gonna put it in there, obviously not to do a comparison as far as like the, the inverting, but so you can just kind of see, here's a, a track that has a lot of dynamic range and here's one that um, I believe I just put in there, uh, Don't You Worry by um, Swedish House Ma Mafia. And you know what? I kind of like that song. It's got uh, a great beat to it, but it's very loud. There's really no dynamic range. So this is kind of some of the modern stuff that we listen to that I don't know that, uh, you know, all this stuff about this high resolution audio would even help this because it's just loud. And then I'll bring in another track. This is uh, It's Time, Imagine Dragons. And I I really like this song too. Again, look at look at how the the waveform just goes max. And um, you know they they say this song uh, up at the top, this Cassandra Wilson song, breathes. This one doesn't give you a chance to breathe. And then finally, I'll put in um, another song by um, Melody Gardo. It's called Worrisome Heart. And you could see how this song breathes. So part of this uh, discussion, when I get into the subjective, tr uh, remember these, uh, these images in your head, because that'll kind of help explain why some people like the uh, high resolution audio, because if they listen to this type of material, that's where they think that you're going to get the most bang for your buck. Uh, but I'll, I have some thoughts on that as well. All right, so we'll close out Audacity. And um, again, we're gonna bring up the 24-bit original one in Amadeus Pro. All right, so again, that's what it looks like. And what I'm gonna do here is bring up the real-time spectrum analyzer. And uh, it's a set at an internal microphone so you can see my voice is way down in the low end here. And we'll set this up to the scale we'll go all the way up to uh, 20,000 Hertz. And then we will switch it to the current document. So now when I hit play on this, I'll lower the volume so that doesn't over. And so this is what it looks like in the spectrum analyzer. And what we'll do is I'll crank up the uh, scale so it's a little more obvious. All right, so we'll close that out and then will bring up the 24-bit uh, versus 24-bit. 
And this is the one that, because it was the exact file, it should just be an absolute straight line because it should 100% cancel out. And that is exactly what we see here. I'll hit play on this and obviously we'll get no sound. I'll switch over to the spectrum analyzer and select 24 versus 24 and there's nothing. Actually, let me do stereo so you can see. All right, uh, exactly as we expected. And we'll close out of that. We switch back over to my microphone here. All right, uh, let's bring up the 24-bit versus 16-bit. Now this one, whoops, I opened that with iTunes. That's not what I wanted. I want to open this with Amadeus Pro. And here you can see a very slight uh, sound wave there. And we're going to hit play. And again, it's still not audible. We'll switch over to the 24 versus 16. And here it is. This is where the audio is that, that's being, that, that's the difference. It's around the 14 kilohertz up to uh, 20 kilohertz and um, very low. Um, if I switch back over to this, And then switch over to the spectrum analyzer and select that. All right, that's what it looks like uh, normally. So you can see what you're missing is just a tiny bit. And so some thoughts on that. Sorry, I'm kind of getting all over the place. All right, so some thoughts on that. Um, depending on your age, this is right around the area where you stop hearing these frequencies. Uh, for, I've uh, tested here in the house with tones through uh, my system, and I could hear about 15 to 16 kilohertz if I make it really loud. And at that point, my daughters are plugging their ears because it's excruciating for them. Uh, beyond that, I can't hear anything. And this is where most of that uh, is being uh, deleted or, or not represented in the, um, in the CD quality version of this. So I'll leave it to you to decide uh, from a math point of view, it's, uh, it's infinitesimal. And uh, for most people, the people who can afford anyway, the high end audio, you're not going to be able to hear it. Um, it. You just, as you get older, you can't hear these frequencies. Uh, so from that point of view, I claim that CD quality is good enough. Uh, you, if you can hear the difference, uh, congratulations. I'll never say nobody can hear the difference because every time I've ever done that in my life, I've been proven wrong. So I will say many people won't hear the difference. If you can hear the difference, congratulations. Uh, also condolences because it's, uh, it's a gift and it could be a curse too. Because if you spend your time um, picking out these details, I also think there are times you don't really actually sit back and just relax and enjoy the music uh, because you think you're missing something. But anyway, that's there. Uh, I showed you how to do this test. You can. Uh, there's other uh, software packages on uh, the Apple and the um, Windows platforms that you can do it for yourself and, and test that out. So now with that, we're going to go to the second part of this experiment, and this is the purely subjective part. And this is where you get to let your ears decide whether you think it's uh, worth it or not to spend the money on uh, high resolution audio. There's a package called ABX and uh, let's see, I bring up the website. You can get it at lasenado.com um, and uh, you, it's available in Linux, Mac and Windows. So regardless of what platform you're running, you'll be able to launch this application and do your own AB test. And that is exactly what this application does. So we will bring it up here and launch it. What you do is you could take your audio that you want to compare and you just drop it into these two areas. So what I'm going to do is compare 16-bit AAC versus the 24-bit um, uh, AIF. So uncompressed versus compressed. Oh, by the way, just uh, one thing I did want to point out. If you look at the uh, original file, it's 148.3 megabytes, and the CD version is 47 megabytes. If you just go with what we talked about before, you can see um, mathematically there's not much of a difference if uh, infinitesimal amount, and you save 
one third the space on your hard drive. And if you got uh, unlimited hard drive and uh, not unlimited, obviously, if you got a lot of hard drive space, maybe you don't care and that's fine, but you can get more audio uh, in this uh, CD format. But just for fun, if you look at the AAC version, it's 8.2 megabytes, so a considerable difference in size quality, in size uh, quantity, sorry. All right, so what you do in the uh, ABX application is you launch, you put uh, your two files in there and you do start shootout. And what this will do, what the application will do, is just randomly put the files in different order and you hit play and the uh, audio will play. We'll lower that and then you listen to the other one and you kind of go back and forth and then you choose one. And then you can go to the next shootout and you go through the whole process again. We'll choose this one. Uh, a cool feature is let's say there is a passage in the uh, audio that you really want to focus on. You think that's where you're going to see the difference for, for whatever reason. You can set it to um, the beginning and end of a loop and then you can hit play and it'll, it'll just loop between those points and you can kind of go back and forth without having to worry about um, listening to the whole song to get to the point where you want. And we're going to choose, oh, I didn't do next shootout. So now let's do that. All right. So when it's all done, you've done, you know, 10 or 15 times, you do show results. And just randomly, I've chosen A two times and B one time. A was the 24-bit audio and uh, B was the 16-bit AAC file. That's how you do the test. And uh, I think a lot of people are quite surprised at, at the results. I did the test myself and I compared the 16-bit AAC versus the 24-bit. I picked the 24-bit 70% of the time. And, um, you know, statisticians will tell you that's still not conclusive. And uh, I'll even tell you that if three times out of 10 I couldn't pick the difference, then, y you know, it's not, um, it, there could be some, a bit of luck involved in that. I think if you really claim you can hear the difference, you need to be able to pick it out 10 times out of 10 or 15 times out of 15. Another thing that I thought was interesting was that there were aspects or parts of the audio that I would focus in on, like maybe the cymbals or something that's a little bit lower frequency and then the cymbals to see how long it took before they faded out. I found myself listening at the music and not to the music in this A-B test. Um, and that's not a very enjoyable way to listen to the music, but I guess for purposes of trying to hear the difference, uh, I guess that works. Uh, however, I think a lot of people get caught up in that and they don't get, they don't sit back and really just enjoy the music. So that's just something that was a personal observation on my part. You may have the same thing or not. What I ended up doing was having about, I think it was 13 people uh, run this test. Uh, my daughters, uh, some uh, friends, uh, associates at work. And two of those people claimed to be audiophiles, for whatever that means. Um, they were able to hear the difference between the 24-bit audio and the 16-bit AAC about the same amount of time as I would. So you could argue that, yeah, most of the time they heard it, but not conclusive. Uh, the remainder, remaining, um, you know, 12 people um, or 11 people could not hear it statistically any difference between 24-bit and 16-bit AAC. So for them, uh, it's definitely not worth it, uh, the cost and the cost of the equipment. And, and that's a good point, too. We were losing, using um, Bowers & Wilkins P5 headphones and the audio engine uh, digital um, converter. And um, price for that, I think it was about $200 or maybe it's $299. And uh, the headphones are about $500. So anywhere between six to $800 worth of equipment. Not the highest end, but definitely we're not talking um, in-ear, you know, earbud type of uh, headphones running just through the, um, the headphone jack on a computer. Your mileage will vary, obviously, with the equipment that you have, but I think the equipment that we were using for this test was higher end than most of the people who participated in the test uh, have. Um, I think it's, it was a good baseline. And again, if you need more expensive equipment than that to hear the difference, you might argue, is it worth it at that point? But anyway, the results were um, 
when we did the 24-bit versus the 16-bit, nobody uh, out of the 12 or 13 people who ran this test could hear the difference in any statistical mean meaningful way. What that tells me is that a lot of people, again, what I said earlier in the part one, many people will not be able to hear the difference. And for those people, it's definitely not worth it. Um, if you can hear the difference, again, I'll say congratulations. And it's a curse, I guess, because you're always striving to get the absolute last drop out of it. And uh, it's one of those things where you spend a lot of money to get um, incremental returns. And you, again, can decide whether it's worth it or not. But I would really like it if um, listeners out there would go and uh, do this test themselves and send us an email and let us know how you did. And um, I, I think it, it will we'll have a discussion on this and we'll, we'll revisit it over time as people start feeding back their results. With that, that's, uh, that's the uh, video. I hope you found it um, informative and uh, maybe at least uh, a little bit to challenge some things. And uh, I hope it spurs you to go out and do this test yourself. Again, you can uh, find us at htguys.com on the internet. Uh, we really appreciate you uh, listening to us and watching our videos. Uh, feedback is always welcome, and you can do that at HDTV podcast at Mac.com. Wait a minute. I put an at in front of it. So it's HDTV podcast at Mac.com. And uh, you can follow us on Twitter at HDTV podcast is myself and Braden is at Braden Russell. Uh, go to our website. You can uh, search at the bottom of the page and you can um, find all kinds of information that we've talked about in podcasts past. You can support the show by going to htguys.com slash Amazon. That takes you over to the Amazon website, or you can just go to htguys.com and click on this big Amazon banner here at the top of the page, and it just brings up the Amazon uh, homepage. Uh, anything you buy from there after clicking that link uh, helps the show, gives us a little bit of a, um, a commission. And last thing, again, you can um, buy us coffee. It's a metaphor. You can click on one of these um, donation levels, and that just gives us a PayPal donation. So we appreciate your support of the show and for listening and watching. And um, again, feedback is always welcome. And uh, we'll see you next time.